morning and welcome. We're so glad that you joined us this morning at St. Wilfred Church for our weekly service of morning prayer. We hope that you enjoy this time of worship and come away filled with God's peace and love and joy. We will be singing our opening hymn. It's uh, Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, the Battle Hymn of the Republic as it's known. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching. in the Book of Common Prayer on page 80. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in page 82 in the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the, For the Lord, Lord is good, his, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 68, verses 1 to 10 and 33 to 36. 
In the Book of Common Prayer, you can find them on page 676. We read in unison. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away and the wax melts at the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and swift before God. And let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives a solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured rain rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel, you sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to the Lord, O the kings of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel is strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the books of the Acts of the Apostle. When apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this a time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight while he was going. They were gazing up towards the heaven, and suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, all of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will sing um, God Will Take Care of You. It's in Levos, page 183. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. God 
will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day. Gospel of John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given to him. And this is the eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth by f finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on the behalf of the world, but on the behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and, your, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Following World War I, labeled the Great War, Eric Remarque wrote a serious classic that I studied in high school. Perhaps you did as well. It was called All Quiet on the Western Front. Remember reading it? Even though it was the 60s, this book was still controversial because the wounds of World War II were still festering. The classic was written from the point of view of the Germans rather than the Americans. The hero in the book was a German named Paul. Paul is what you and I would call a survivor. He managed to stay alive in the foxholes of that horrible war. And it is the latter days of the war where we find him in our story. And I quote, 
Nobody wants this war. This war is sort of a fever, a fever that is contagious and spreading. All we do is live in the trenches and fight. Every day is a year, every night is a century. We just try to stay alive. A few minutes later, in the dark stillness, while they wait in the damp foxholes, Paul sees a butterfly. It's beautiful, and it was just beyond his reach. It reminds him of God's presence and of hope. Paul pulls forward to reach out and touch this beauty of nature. He is shot dead by an unknown, faceless enemy. May we never forget the senselessness of war that steals our innocence and the beauty of this world. It is part of the evil we must overcome. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. Although we are socially isolating at home, war across the globe is still out there. In many ways, this year is like other war times. You and I are confronting an enemy that we cannot see, that is threatening our freedom and our very lives at home and abroad. We do not feel at peace. We're fearful because this virus is dividing people, one member of a family among another, family members against loved ones. And this epidemic will ripple for generations to come. The, sur the controversies surviving, surrounding this virus are part of the evil of this disease and the war on scientific truths. As Christians and as Americans, we want to live differently. We want to look to a future that is bright, filled with hope and anticipation. We want to look to a time when we can see the end of this vicious enemy, attacking our most vulnerable among us. We want to forget this nightmare. It doesn't have an ending. We believe in perseverance and our abilities to build, but it's very hard not to lose our innocence. We want to destroy this enemy that is robbing us and trying to replace our lives with hatred and despair. As a faith community, we are especially concerned about being able to return to our places of worship we feel the enemy, this senseless thing, is trying to destroy our churches, our temples, our mosques, our liturgical traditions and music, our fellowship gatherings, as well as trying to prevent people from leaving their homes. We have a deep fear that our freedoms are being stripped from us forever. We're fearful and we're frightened that the enemy will destroy even the small lives and the poor among us. We feel there's nothing we can do about it. We want this medical war over. We want all conflicts to end. We dream of a future time when peace is the only way of life. As human beings and as Americans in particular, we cannot let fear overcome us. In 2014, when President Obama was meeting and sharing in the memorial at the Pentagon, he said, fear paralyzes. Fear strips the mind of potential and the soul of possibility. We must carry on because as Americans, we do not give in to fear ever. Fear cannot win. Jesus taught us there is nothing that can separate us from God's loving touch and his presence. And so we must remain firm in loving God and our neighbor. We must have courage and persevere. Tomorrow, while many of you are remembering the wars of your youth, I would like us to look at the Civil War. 
Perhaps you will remember that it is most appropriate because it was at the beginning, in the time of the Civil War, when Memorial Day has its roots. A general, a former general in the federal government when we were at war, a man by the name of John Logan, called for the first day of remembrance on May 30th, 1868. It was spring, and all the flowers were beginning to bloom. He called upon school children to go out to the cemeteries and spread flower petals on all the graves because death, in death, we are all equal. All the souls at rest are noble. I would suggest as Christians it is important for us to celebrate Memorial Day. I know it's not a religious holiday, it's a secular one, but I think that all aspects of life have things for us that are helpful. I believe that it's important for us to reflect on the actions of our past and recommit to a future of peace. Recommit to a future of peace that is the only way of life. On November 18th, 1861, Julia Ward Howe went to the Willard Hotel in Washington, D.C. to write. She reflected on scripture, and so she reviewed the scriptures and studied the scriptures of Isaiah 63 and the Revelation to John chapter 19. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because of all that the Lord has done for us, Isaiah tells us. Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him glory. Hallelujah. As a faithful Christian, she and her husband Samuel understood the life of being a Christian involved sacrifice, perseverance, and courage. They were passionate about the need to love all of God's children, and they wanted to do something about the hatred and division around them. They were deeply involved in the anti-slavery movement. That night in the Willard Hotel, Julia studied her scriptures and fell asleep. She was awakened at some point with the lyrics of the song that we sang, the battle hymn of the Republic. Through the lyrics of the hymn, she wanted everyone to know and experience faith and hope. Fear of war and slavery would not win, ever. God's truth would win out. Slavery would not be the law of the land. Praise God, great and small, salvation and power and glory to our God, for his judgments are true. That hymn, through words of scripture, became the popular song of camp meetings, sung during battle and is part of our American oral and written traditions. The words can be found on the foot of the cemetery memorial dedicated to our American soldiers who perished in Normandy, France. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. No fear, only courage to see the evil at hand destroyed. Freedom restored. Peace it was part of Dr. Martin Luther King's central message of God's peace and love. It was sung the last night of his life at the rally for freedom. On July 3rd, 2015, when the Right Reverend Michael Curry, Bishop of North Carolina, was overwhelmingly elected our presiding bishop in the Episcopal Church, the gathering stood up and began to sing. All of our general convention deputies, bishops, priests, deacons, and laity alike from all over the country and our territories joined together in saying, glory, glory, hallelujah, God's truth is marching on. And through this day and throughout his ministry, Bishop Curry, our presiding bishop, teaches us the way of love and hope and peace as Jesus' people. 
Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth, a message of peace, not fear, will march on. We will not be broken by evil on the battlefield or in the petri dish. We will fight with the army that we have, calling out global peace as the only way forward. So this morning, through cyberspace and on our, our online gathering, we recall our painful past and tearfully reflect on the awful cost of war. We remember the more than three million men and women of the armed forces, the seven million veterans, the wounded, the prisoners of war, and the more than 58,000 names etched on a wall not counting those that we haven't found and their families who are waiting for them to come home. Yes, my brothers and sisters, freedom and peace are very expensive. The ghosts of war's past continue to ripple through families and will for several generations yet unborn. So let's look at one battle in the Civil War, the Battle of Shiloh. Lou Wallace fought in the Battle of Shiloh, and you might say, I don't remember Lou Wallace. Who was Lou Wallace? He wrote the great literary book, Ben-Hur. Now, we know Ben-Hur from Cecil B. DeMille and Charlton Heston, but he was a great writer, and this literary work will stand the test of time. If General Ulysses S. Grant had been slain at Shiloh, we would have lost a future president of the United States that helped to heal the war-torn country, along with, Doc, with General Robert E. Lee. If General Brigadier, Reverend Brigadier General Francis A. Shoup had fallen, leading his Confederate battalion, we would have lost a future university president at Swanee and a great outspoken anti-racism author. But these were the ones who survived to live out their potential futures and life dreams. They are the ones that have changed the world for good. What about those who were lost? What about those who didn't come home? We must mourn the life dreamers and the potentials of doctors, scientists, authors, poets, college presidents, inventors, creative dreamers, and clergy who never had a chance to reach their potential. During the horrible two days at Shiloh, we lost so much. And then, my friends, multiply those battles and losses with all the other wars of history. Then, and only then, can we realize how staggering and expensive these things have been. All in all, if you add them up, it's over a million deaths. A million deaths. The number is staggering. We have to stop the carnage. We have to stop the carnage. All the young men and women that never saw maturity, fulfilled their dreams, used their gifts to build America into a loving, peaceful nation. We've all been touched by this. God's truth and desire for peace must be the winner. We cannot be caught in sentimentality. We celebrate this Memorial Day to remember and commit. Recommit to peace being the only way of life. Don't let tomorrow be filled with sentimentality, with hot dogs and flag wavings and songs. It can't be a day that we want to just see fireworks, shop online for deals and hear patriotic music, just to forget this pandemic that has invaded our lives. Fear cannot win. Sentimentality cannot be its replacement. And yes, we cannot fall into the trap and believe that those soldiers died in vain. We would be doing them such a disservice. We must come to some sort of understanding that the seeds of most wars can be found in economics. There was an expression in the Confederate Army, 
Rich man's war, poor man's fight. How tragic. And that could be echoed throughout most wars, whether fought with soldiers or in the medical community, with scientists being pitted against politicians. Decisions were and are made about economics being the seed. But military strength and scientific facts are not to be despised when they deal with international gangsters on the ground, in the air, or in the petri dishes. We cannot let economics be the driver of our decisions about peace and health and goodwill. We must put on our armor of Christ that courageously works to restore priests in God's kingdom and in the laboratory. As the professional soldier and Christian General Douglas MacArthur stood on the deck of the battleship USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay in 1945 to receive the formal surrender of the Japanese government, he remarked, the problem is basically theological in nature. It must be the spirit if we're to save the flesh. General MacArthur, who had spent his life on the battlefield, was a faithful Episcopalian that understood, understood that strength, purpose, and courage came from a relationship with Jesus Christ. With faith and fear will not win. With faith, fear will not win. God will prevail. God so loved the world that he gave us his only son that we might have eternal life. So my brothers and sisters, we are God's children and we are Jesus' people here to defend the faith and be the good and good and amb goodwill ambassadors for the future. Christ has opened the door for us to live. So tomorrow, when your televisions and computers pan the eerie silence of the cemeteries, like the rolling fields of Gettysburg and Bull Run, the silence of Flanders Field, the rock of Iwo Jima. Remember the garden stones of Arlington, Virginia, and every graveyard in America, little hamlets and communities throughout our country where the fallen rest. Remember that they fought so that truth could live a little longer. Perhaps in the silence there will be sounds of trumpets, perhaps the rat-a-tat-tat of drums, and the lonely bugler's call, even if it is virtual reality. The pandemic will not steal our remembrances. Yes, we'll be filled with emotions and we'll be filled with memories. They won't be easy ones. Yet mixed with these feelings, I pray there'll be a sense of recommitment to hope and expectation for the future, that we will continue to work for peace being the only way forward and the example of Christ's presence will help us make that happen. It is the way of our faith, the imperative we must live by. No fear. We will not give in to fear ever. As Christ died to make us holy, let us live to make the world free. Because our God, his truth, is marching on. Amen. Tears go 
the streets of gold, and all of heaven I will behold. When I get to heaven, gonna shout hallelujah. If you make it there, you can shout it too. When I see Jesus, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Sit down, servant, I can't sit down. Sit down, servant, can't sit down. Sit down, servant, can't sit down. I just got to heaven and I can't sit down. Sit down, servant, I can't sit down. Sit down, servant, can't sit down. Sit down, servant, can't sit down. I just got to heaven. God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory judging the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers continue on page 97. The Lord be with you. And also with you. <laughs> Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech you that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people, the multitudes brought here out of many kindreds and tongues. And do with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in your name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, do not let our trust in you fail, all which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ever-living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We remember all who are sick or in any sort of trouble, especially Joanne, William, Andrew, Margie, Carolyn, Anne, Robert, Elizabeth, Jeanette, Dee Dee, George, and Jack. We offer prayers of gratitude for healthcare workers and all persons working in essential businesses who risk their own health to meet our needs. We rejoice with those observing birthdays, including Helen Gessner, George Harding, Barbara Harding, Peter Boehner, and with Lynn and Phil Rogers and Leslie and Lila Porter who observe wedding anniversaries. We remember all who have died and all who mourn. I invite at this time your personal prayers and intercessions and thanksgivings. On page 101, please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come to you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. We will close by singing from our hymnal, hymn number 450, verses 1, 2, and 3.
are so glad you joined us this morning. Hope that it will kick off a, a grand celebration for you. Thank you, Joyce, for those wonderful words. There will be this morning a coffee hour beginning. I'll, I've got to go home and get the email out, but it should be right around 1145 that we'll all be checking in. And then at noon, the vestry is going to meet. So we will let the coffee hour keep going, and I will go over to the vestry meeting and any vestry members who happen to be in the coffee hour. Uh, but the coffee hour can go on. So um, Also, within the next week or so, we are going to send out whatever the vestry works up today as a plan for the possibility of reopening um, worship, depending on when it's safe to do that. We want to talk to everybody. I want to hear what you have to say, what your concerns are, what would make you feel safe, what would make you want to come back. So um, we will be sending that information out in the news, the e-news blast, and then shortly after that you can expect a call if a week goes by and you don't get a call, please call us because we have some specific questions. Consider this a poll, if you will. Um, we want to hear what you think. So that will happen. I don't think there's anything else. No? Uh, there will be Bible study this, this Thursday morning um, online, as we have been doing at 1015. Okay. Where is she? There she is. Yeah, yeah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, there is one thing more. Wait, wait, wait. I forgot. Next Sunday is Pentecost. Wear red. Out there in TV land, we want to see of red. Okay? Wear red. Okay. Now you can. Are we good? <laughs>